What's up, guys? It's your boy, Gusnov, uh, and I'm joined here with my great friends, Markiplier, Sergeant Kipling, uh, my boy Raymond, and Carl Marx. Um, so in today's, in today's Gusnov show, we are discussing, well, we're exploring the topic of UFOs. What are they? And uh, I guess, what do we do about them? What's, what's, and, and any kind of maybe misinformation about it? Because I think that in modern culture, we're kind of led to believe that there's one way to look at them, like, oh, it's just aliens. But there's actually probably multiple ways of interpreting actually what's going on. So without any further ado, uh, let's, let's get into it. <clears throat> so um, I guess just, just to start, I think that, I guess, and, and you, if you guys want to want to chime in too, um, my thought of, of, of UFOs and kind of what they could be are essentially there's, there's, there's a few options. I, I spent like a few hours, like two hours the other day, writing down a bunch of different, anything, everything I could possibly brainstorm about what the origins of UFOs are. And I think the, the, the fundamental ones are um, they're either aliens they're um, extra dimension, extra dimensional entities um, of of some sort, or you could argue that those are like demons or something along those lines. Um, they could be a a weather phenomena or some form of unknown physics that we don't really know about. Um, they could be, and and this this is kind of gets wacky, but like uh, maybe some sort of Psycho, uh, psychic manifestation or projection from human consciousness. I'm not sure. Well, we don't really know any physics or if that's even possible, but who knows? Um, and then I guess what else? Is it? it could be that uh, maybe there's, I don't know, humans aren't like the only smart, intelligent entity that rose up on Earth. And it could have been like some sort of animal we don't know about or something that lives at the bottom of the ocean or something like that. Who knows? Um, and, or it could be that, well, okay, well, there's a few blah, 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 or it could be all just be a psyop, like the entire UFO idea could just be a, a very large and convincing kind of ploy for people to believe that these are real, but they're actually not. Um, anyway, those are, those are a few different ideas, but, uh, you guys got, you guys got any thoughts on that? Yeah. So Gustav to, to, I think to kind of help lay the groundwork here. Um, people mean different things um, when they say UFOs. Would it be helpful maybe to go over some of the kinds of um, uh, different pieces of of evidence or or that the things that serve as kind of flashpoints for this conversation, right? Like the Bob Lazar interviews or the sightings that were released as part of ATIP or right, just kind of like a survey generally of those different things that get discussed, the Tic Tac incident, things like that. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not, I'm not too like well versed. All I know is that, I mean, the military, the government have released official documentation on UFOs. It seems to me like it's a, I mean, a pretty, you know, it's a real phenomenon. And I think that it's also like historically, there have been many accounts of of these being seen. Um, and I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an expert on like the actual, you know, sightings and stuff, but to me, it seems like it's a, a legitimate thing. Do you want to, do you want to go into that more Raymond? If you're, if you're more, if you, you're more well. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think some of this stuff you can just kind of dismiss out of hand, right? Like the stories of the farmer that, you know, something happened to one of their cows and they can't find it anymore. They've got some crazy story. Right? I mean, you know, you're going to have crazy people in a society that you're going to have people that, um, whether it's because of mental health issues or whatever it is, they hear voices or they just want attention. Like you're going to have people making stuff up. So I think that the eyewitness accounts that are purely kind of uncorroborated individual eyewitness testimonies, there's a lot of that stuff out there. And I feel like most of that stuff you can probably dismiss out of hand. I think the things that, that drive a lot more conversation and things that eventually kind of move into the mainstream are things where, you know, um, there's radar evidence, there's video evidence. Um, you have multiple eyewitness accounts confirming the same thing. I think one of the most fascinating and compelling incidents um, is from the USS Nimitz, right? Um, 
where those um, Navy pilots claimed to have seen that white Tic Tac, right? Are others familiar with um, that incident? Yeah. Yeah. And I guess so, just so that, one, that one, one thing, thing I wanted to add to that, question, right? one thing I wanted to just add to that, just as, as a something of, I guess, is, that I think is really important here is that multiple sensors um, and multiple modes of, of viewing picked up the same exact phenomenon. Because if it was just, oh, he saw something, you could easily explain away like, oh, he saw something as like some visual artifacting, right? Or if it's just on radar or if it's just on this, but through through sight on multiple different EM or electromagnetic bands, right? Um, you, you saw the same exact thing. I also have heard that that in some of these instances, there was like active um, active radar jamming, which means yep. that the, there's a signal that is sent out, right? And you get a signal sent back that like mimic it basically tries to confuse the computer, but you need to have an intelligent algorithm to essentially do that. And I'm not sure. I, I haven't really studied that that much, but I've, I've, I believe that that's probably something that has actually happened. Um, but, but the fact of the matter is multiple sensors have seen this and it's not, you can't, so it's very hard to explain away um, this because it isn't just like a fluke of one sensor. Anyway, didn't mean to interrupt. Continue, please. No, I mean, that's about it for that one. I, I think um, it's an interesting uh, event to kind of kick off our discussion, I think, because exactly as you say, Gusnab, we have um, the several eyewitness accounts, right? There's the the two pilots that were in that cockpit who have come forward publicly. There's testimony from two pilots who have not yet identified themselves that were also a part of that encounter. There's independent radar data as well as uh, I didn't know about the jamming. Um, so that, that may be true, but if it is, it's news to me. Um, and then, and but there's independent radar data that confirms um, um, some of those. Um, what was seen, at least on the um, on the cameras as well, right? So, so these people clearly saw something, right? And I think I think it begs. It, it, there's a lot of questions that it begs, right? The um, the testimony claims that the the this object started to mimic it as the plane came in close. Um, claims that it uh, looked kind of like a tic tac. Um, it was smooth around all of its edges. It didn't have any obvious signs of propulsion. Um, it obviously, like I said, it mimicked the aircraft, and then it vanished um, um, right before their eyes. Right. So I don't have any way of explaining that, um, at least not easily. Right. Um, in the world that I I know. Mm -hmm. Karl Marx, Kipling. Markiplier, how about we hear from you guys? Um, I think there's a there's a pretty obvious problem in that uh, you know you have this science fiction concept of visitors from another another world, uh, you know UFOs, aliens, and so the the term UFO gets conflated with this sort of vast mythology. Uh, which I guess just appeals to our subconscious on some level. And then now you have all this completely unrelated, um, a completely unrelated stuff regarding the, you know, the tic tac shaped object, the military encounters, and they have to call it a, a UFO, right? Or uh, I guess, what did they change it to? Unidentified aerial phenomenon, UAP. Yeah, that's right. They have to call it the same thing because that's literally what it is, but it has genuinely nothing to do with this uh you know this science fiction story about aliens or whatever so uh, there's there's kind of a problem there and that we you know we don't obviously no one knows what this yeah. is all we can really do is speculate but it's it's clearly not um what we've been calling ufos and aliens for yeah. it's, it's over true. 50 Especially years with the example of the tic tac you have a um four people essentially seen the same thing, the, se the same perception, and you have radar evidence of a perception or of a object, right? But does that endorse, does that lead true the metaphysical proposition, number one, that life has evolved on another planet, number two, that conscious life evolved on another planet, number three, that they are able to obtain technology, conceal themselves from all of human peering into the universe and come to earth just to have that one fluke of their concealments where they showed themselves to some military aircraft and then disappeared 
All we know is that an object was seen. We don't know anything about anything aliens or any any other fascinations that we try to pin onto it. We know that there was an unidentified object that was floating, and that's the extent of our knowledge. So any other propositions that that might endorse is right now non-evidential. There isn't really any reason to believe <clears throat> anything past what's already been seen. And it's tough to explain what's been seen, but I do have more confidence in the fact that humans don't really know how things work entirely on our own planet even. And I wouldn't be surprised if weather phenomenon, much like ball lightning in the in the World War II where pilots thought the Nazis had developed a, a different weapon that was more destructive than they could imagine. And it was really just an extremely rare weather phenomenon of lightning condensing into balls and kind of just floating in the sky. And that must have been so surreal to look at at the time, especially when you had multiple people seeing that same phenomenon. But they didn't have access. Well, they maybe they did. Maybe there's little inklings of the science fiction um, story of the alien kind of developing at that time anyway. But they weren't. They didn't really attribute it to aliens. They attributed it to Nazi technology. And then we have a, a similar situation where the actual conclusion was something much more understandable yeah and, and I, I guess just one one thing i kind of want to add to that is um i mean and i i don't, I don't know if i'm uh if i'm butchering kind of your, your statement here but i think um the 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 idea that it logically follows like oh oh yeah no this must be aliens right i i do think that it's it's uh it's, it, yeah it doesn't doesn't just necessarily follow and i just I just I guess just um, I remember uh, was Raymond and Markiplier and I um, one, one day we we spent like what is it four hours talking about this I think that's uh, right but but we, we we talked about okay well what are what are all the kind of well geez I, I wish I wish I had the notes in front of me um, we should probably do another podcast when, when we get the notes but um, essentially the idea was um, how, how does it go uh, well, we, we, number one, we looked at like all the different categories, general set categories of what the, the explanation could be. And then we went into kind of what the problems are with with each explanation we came up with. Um, but but in regards to aliens, the problems with with the idea of aliens is that right now um, our perceptual understanding of how the universe operates in terms of maybe, well, from from what we can see out there. Um, our understanding of how civilizations probably develop is that they um, most likely start expanding. And if you look at the Kardashev scale, um, essentially they start expanding from their home star, developing kind of Dyson swarms, which are space stations that can essentially collect energy from the sun. And at, at some point you'd be able to essentially see if, if life, if life existed out there, we would, we should theoretically be able to see that life, even if they have like very good cloaking technology and whatnot, like you're still going to see waste heat from a star system. And uh, it, it would, it would, it would follow that, that if life really was abundant, we'd be able to see it. Um, but from my understanding, a lot of kind of people within the astrophysical astrobiological community are kind of saying the, the solution, to the Fermi's paradox isn't, that there's there's like alien life is like super present out there they actually think that alien life is extremely rare um at least intelligent alien life and um well alien life is so rare that there's probably only like a couple dozen if any it, uh like alien species or intelligent alien species throughout the entire observable universe. And what will happen is that they'll expand outside of like from their home star at a, at a fraction of the speed of light. Right. And um, how would you say it? They expand from their home star at a fraction of the speed of light and they prevent the, the, the kind of the beginning of other alien civilizations and using game theory, um, the modeling predicts that, well, within like only the, sp the span of like a billion years, the entire observable universe gets uh, colonized. And um, according to these theoretical models, and then I'm, I'm almost done, but according to these theoretical models, um, 
it would it makes sense that we don't see anyone right now because if we existed like at some point in the future right where where there's more intelligent life out there we probably wouldn't even emerge but anyway i'm very i'm butchering this point i would i would highly recommend looking up um this video called grabby aliens on youtube it's like 20 or 30 minutes but uh they they go into the mathematics behind it and i think it's actually pretty good anyway i've talked a long time didn't didn't mean to to, to hog the spotlight but if you guys do you guys have any other or any thoughts on that well it's kind of as you said you know you if 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 aliens are if if it's true if it's true that there's aliens out there then everything that we know about physics and our observations is wrong and i don't know if we can comfortably make that claim like has there really been that like was is there really enough evidence for such a such a grand revelation in like the human wisdom where everything's wrong just because of a tic tac or because of an object or because of any uh, other anecdotal sightings of aliens or the more convincing ones of a radar apparition of an object are you really ready to make the comfortable you know denial of almost all of human physics up until this point and especially even modern technological developments like are we comfortable saying that's all wrong yes wait market player wrong. let me let me qualify that that statement you're making here you, you you started out by saying if if in fact there are aliens out there but do you really mean if the origin of these uh, UAPs is, you know, alien in nature, that that is what would mean that all of our models or physics are wrong. Is you that really what you're saying? Rest, like, just not on, not from Earth. Correct. Um, the, yeah. I think, I think because because I, I think certainly there could be aliens out there, right? But perhaps that have developed so much later in such smaller to such a smaller degree, so much farther away that that wouldn't necessitate. Re, you know, revisiting every model of physics we have, right? I mean, Good or, is, or are you that saying true? that too? Uh, so, I guess, I guess the one one idea there would be, um, I don't, from from my understanding, well, number. Oh, well, it's necessarily true, right? Look at look at the most distant galaxies that we can observe with James Webb, right? We, we're, we're looking at them in a very, very early stage. Certainly, if you were to look at our galaxy in that stage, you wouldn't find Earth with life on it, right? So, and that's the, that's the most up-to-date data we can get from those galaxies, right? So I think, it, you know, and let's imagine hypothetically that you have an intelligent civilization similar to ours that develops in that galaxy. We wouldn't have to reinvent our, our model of physics to imagine how that could happen and, um, and, and that the fact that we wouldn't be able to detect them, right? Well, well, I would say that that the only kind of instance where I think that an alien civilization would be able to conceivably hide is if they don't expand and they remain relatively small, meaning that maybe they exist within like kind of simulated environments where, I mean, they just plug themselves into artificial reality and then um, they only have like, let's say, a few billion people living on their planet or whatever. Um, but but I... I I mean that that's that's kind of like a sociological prediction. Um, I think in terms of like the actual, um, I mean, I'm kind of blanking on the actual like physics reason why I think that it's unlikely that there's a lot of aliens out there. But um, uh, are, yeah. are you guys? I, I, hold on, I, I have an interjection. Quick, when you're talking about this, like disproving physics and and what we know, um, are, are what are you referencing exactly? Because uh, like is that the is this the part where people are saying they can travel at light speed is that corroborated or like they're they're like bending time or warping or something i know uh i was talking to a, an individual online who said there was like proof of warp drives or something and you know i'm <laughs> that's not what i'm seeing i'm just seeing a bunch of flying tic tacs so what exactly about this is so physics breaking well, one thought, I, well, one thing, I, one explanation I've heard about UFOs was that they, I guess, use gravity augmentation technology. Where, um, well, yeah, uh, Bob Lazar talks about that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hear that, but I'm like that. It could also just be like gnome magic. Like there could be a little like gnome warlock propelling these things. Like, where's the? Why are people just coming up with 
theoretical physics for how these things are operating? What exactly is making them jump to that other than it just sounds cool? Well, like I like my theory more. I think there's little gnomes piloting Tic Tacs. This is how they've been able to evade uh, detection for so long. They were real all along. You can't prove that that's any less legitimate than the the gravity one or more legitimate. I mean, we're back to square one. Right, and that's what what makes it a useful thought exercise, I think, right? Because that's true. Yeah, well, well, I also, so that I think I think the kind of the gravity thing it did come from Bob Lazar, but that also kind of necessitates like thinking that he's credible source. And I don't know, I, I've seen I've seen like a podcast with him. I, I don't I don't really find him credible. I think that I don't know. It seems like he's he's lying. Um, but uh, yeah. Any anyway, continue. Yeah, I mean, I I just I guess. You know, I, I don't understand when we're throwing around things like this breaks, this changes everything. Uh, I, I'm not really sure how exactly. Okay. I just don't. Get okay, that. so multiplier. I think it so, changes. It changes the way that we understand how future engineering operates and the Kardashev model. Right, Kardashev model says that first you 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 absorb all the energy around your your. For type one, you absorb the energy of your planet. The next one is you absorb the energy of your star. And the next one is you absorb the energy of their galaxy. And then the last one is you absorb the energy of the entire universe. Um, so so to say that, and in the Kardashev model, from our understanding, you would be able to visually see um, the energy being taken away from, from stars, from, from galaxies, right? You'd be able to very clearly see the waste heat um, the fact of the matter is we don't we don't see any major project like we don't see like Dyson swarms. We don't see anything like that. And well, I mean, Gustav, if I can interject here, you would yeah. see them as as a function of prevalence and time. Right. I mean, you know, like yeah, right, yeah, that, those would be other factors that could influence whether or not we see them as, oh, well, they've developed, but they've developed so far away that it'll be another few billion years before we see them. Or perhaps they are so rare that we don't see them, right? I mean, those would be other factors that could, you know, mathematically factor into that equation, no? Yeah, and that would also mean that they wouldn't have gotten here. Because from my understanding, I don't think there's yes. anything that can break um, causality, which is the speed of light. There's nothing that can go faster than causality. Because if you go faster than the speed of light, you can go backwards in time. And I think we all know, like, a bunch of paradoxes that show that you can't go back in time. Um, also, I, I I don't know. Anyway, so so if if you, if you yes if you think time travel is sane, then well then 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 you 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 can you can accept light speed faster than light travel, but I don't think that that's a real thing. Um, but well, anyway, that's what I want to connect thing, back thing. to what Markiplier was saying, though. Right? That's why I asked Markiplier when he says this breaks breaks physics. Right? I I think Markiplier, and correct me if I'm wrong. You didn't mean the presence of alien life out there or even even advanced alien civilizations you meant the the conclusion that as you demonstrated takes many logical jumps to arrive at that the the uap sightings that have been made by our military are extraterrestrial in origin and 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 have an origin in alien life that's to believe that would require this this new understanding of physics right which is what gustav's alluding to with, with what he's saying about faster than light travel is that is that correct correct but there's also two okay. things the first is that if you do, I think that if you do believe that the the TikTok is, um, or the Tic Tac is of extraterrestrial origin, that you are going to have to assess the the conclusions that uh, Gusnov talked about, where certain models of physics do not uphold anymore. Like, you, there's how would they be able to hide the the yeah. progress of the energy heat? How would they be able to hide all that? The Dyson spheres, all that stuff. Or two, and Gusnov, you probably know more about this than I do. We have more technology than just the James Webb tel- telescope to assess like cosmological data. Would that technology actually provide us other information? Like I'm thinking more of the technology we use to get the cosmic microwave uh, background. I don't know if that was done with a, t- uh, a telescope like the James Webb. I don't know if it was done using predictive like mathematic formulas or physical models and stuff. Do you know if that data conflicts with the hypothesis that aliens are on planet. 
All right, guys. Okay, thanks for the intermission. Um, we have non-premium Zoom, so we only have 40 minutes uh, per recording. But here we are. We're back. We're back at it again. So um, what was his name? Markiplier was talking about um, – what was it what was it okay I, from my understanding it it was and then 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 drake you need apparel <laughs> apparel man <laughs> it's okay um, we can edit that out yeah I don't know. Wait. Wait. what what'd you say what well, do you what? want to get back to what i was saying yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have Markiplier finish his point about like other data beyond telescope. That's true. Data, that's true. Right? But I do have to, as Karl Marx uh, pointed out in our private uh, communications, I was kind of drifting from the topic. I'm moving away from UFOs, and now I'm just talking about aliens in general. So maybe it's a better idea to the topic I was kind of mentioning is is more about aliens in general, like more as as a question on if they are truly do we have is our data able to uh account for them being concealed because i i i'm under the assumption we have more data to assess cosmological data or more instruments to assess cosmological data than just the james Webb telescope and yes. other telescopes like it like it and i wanted to ask gusnov if concealed aliens are a um do not conflict with any other data that we have that is not just uh, telescopic images or assessments. Um, yeah, so my understanding is we have a pretty good kind of look at the night sky. Um, and I think from my, well, I think that we still haven't fully integrated like as much as we can with machine learning and, and just basic uh, comp sci algorithms, which we really do need. Um, yes. In terms of like analyzing everything out there. Um, but from my understanding, we have a decent understanding of kind of what's out there. We have a good idea and map of the sky. And um, well, there are many instances where we kind of see anomalies out there in the stars. Um, but we, I, mean, I, I think we, we were pretty good at, at, at locating them. Um, now, is it perfect? I don't think so. I'm not going to like claim that that our data set is like great, but I would will I will say that if there are like alien civilizations out there, like we should have on the anomalies everywhere. But but the, the issue is we don't we have there are like no anomalies anywhere. Like there's like maybe like a few. I think there was one where. Um, like the the sun was dim, like there was a star out there that was like dimming, and then yeah, yeah, like it was, it was weird dimming patterns. I forgot exactly what it was, but I, I it was I a very know. unique like star thing. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not I'm not convinced that that's a that's a. Uh, you know. I think it got disproved. It was it was thought to be something that was that was similar to a Dyson sphere, but it, it ended up being just a very unique. Um, but 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 I, the assertion here is that our data it's not perfect, but you don't really need perfect data for um for, for for you to like for it to be kind of clear that there that life is abundant within the the, the universe and That's also right. with the game theory model of 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 with the two assumptions that once a a let, let me just let me make it very clear the assumptions of our current game theory um understanding of, of how like cosmic sociology is you have uh, uh some some intelligent life originating at a star and what it would the behavior of this would be that um it would start expanding out from the origin of the point star at some fraction of the speed of light and um and there's no really no reason why why that shouldn't be the case like okay position one it starts at a point position two it expands in position three once it expands um, there are no new like civilizations that really emerge within the domain of that thing, right? If you if you if you let's say you take over a solar system, right? You're probably going to terraform the planets, dismantle planets, dismantle asteroids, and the life in that system. You're going to be the dominant life in that system, even if there is another kind of um, how would you say it, like a, an intelligent life form in that system. You're going to be the dominant civilization. It's going to be your civilization, even if someone else exists there already. So so. Aliens expand and they dominate. And that's those are the two assumptions that we have under like game theory models. And from those models, 
even if life is abundant, like within just a couple million years, and maybe at the at the max, like a billion years, the entire galaxy and the entire observable universe would be like teeming with life everywhere and it would be obvious everywhere that we see alien life. But the, the issue is we don't see it anywhere. And this is actually very consistent with our game theory models, which predict that if a civilization like arrive, like, like if we, you are going to be part of the set of civilizations that exist, it's more likely that you will exist, like you will start now. And you will see like if in an early civilization, you won't see anything. But it doesn't mean that there aren't aliens necessarily. It just means like there's they're rare or they're not there at all, right? Well, I'd like to say that there probably aren't aliens. I'd say it's probably extremely rare um, if 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 there's anything. But I would say that, that that just looking out at what we see with the current data we have, I mean, you don't need a huge data set. Like this is one thing with data science. You don't need a like a gigantic data set to kind of prove a trend, right? Sometimes the data that you have, even if it's imperfect, is good enough because it kind of shows you like, okay, this picture looks all right. And it's but anyway, but that's my point. There, there's there's a possibility, maybe that 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 maybe there's some science and physics that we don't understand, or maybe there's a way of cloaking your star, or maybe there's a way of doing this or that, or or whatever, or maybe aliens don't exactly behave according to the domination and expansion principles. But it seems to me like those principles are pretty solid. And unless we have like like some kind of counter theory that works better at explaining the model that we have now, this model is one of the better or best models that we have. But anyway, yeah. that's, that's what I'm talking about when it comes to physics. Now, thank you. A model, to... a model in a theory is not evidence, but it's an explanation. And it, this seems to me to be the best explanation we have. Anyway, continue. I wanted to I wanted to use your thoughts to adjust what Raymond had said, where not only is the question of the Tic Tac being of extraterrestrial origin, that conflicts with modern physics. So if we, and if we're not comfortable of doing that, then we can disregard the Tic Tac, and then we can move on to alien civilizations as a whole. But as as Gustav has described, if alien civilizations are present as a whole, there has to be something else. Like they have to be hidden, or our science has to be wrong, and there has to be other hidden variables we're not accounting for, or they disobey our models, which is also a big deal. And on that note, it would appear to be that endorsing the view of advanced alien civilizations. Um, itself would be conflicting with other models that we have developed, and that's a further that's a further thing that you have to consider now because now they you're pushing back the existence of aliens to being on planets where they're concealed, or that our science is wrong and that and that our models are wrong and there's things we don't understand about science which you can make that claim, but you I think it, as Gustav said, you really have to know like what you're talking about when you make those claims because you have to be able to say like okay, this is where we are missing. This is where things can be wrong. And this is where things can't be wrong. This is where things are very codified into how we view reality and stuff. Okay, Markiplier, let me let me ask you about your definition of hidden, because I think whether or not I agree with that statement depends on that. And let me give you an example. So in, in 2015, a galaxy was discovered called GNZ11. It's a high redshift galaxy, right? And um, it is approximately 32 billion light years away, right? Which means that we're looking at, if you will, the galaxy as it was 32 billion years ago. So hypothetically, if we were to imagine, you know, let's say a type one, a type two, um, maybe even a type three civilization that, um, you know, would, would exist 32 billion years after, um the the light data that we're we're getting um now right it, it it may have you know developed within that 32 billion years right but the latest data we can possibly get if we accept that there's a universal speed limit to the universe is 32 billion light years old right so i think it hinges on on time and on prevalence as well right certainly they're not prevalent or else there would be some nearby right um yeah, as Gustav stated, um, for for data science, you don't need to you don't need you don't need to even consider that galaxy in this 
in in your assessment of 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 the universe because you can have a pretty good just understanding of what we have already and this is what i am going well, no it would just speak to the prevalence right said. say it again well wouldn't it purely speak to the prevalence okay if they exist they have to be so um you know non-prevalent that they exist in, at incredible distances right rather than that they no. don't exist is the argument it correct me if i'm wrong gustav um but it, is our models claiming that if aliens were to exist at all there would be prevalence or is the claim that um not that <laughs> okay, so 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 the, the, the more the most likely solution um to solutions to the fermi paradox are that if aliens exist they're probably spread out very far um, and you probably won't interact with another one for a while because if you do then that means that you're probably gonna your civilization is probably gonna end or be be adopted into that other civilization um ra rather quickly meaning that 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 well you, you probably have you'd probably be interacting with them like a lot sooner or already have been in or or would have already interacted with them. So 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 you either interact with them like maybe at the inception of your civilization, right? You know, like right at the beginning, or you interact like a billion years in the future, right? Um, and yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's. I hope that answers that question. And Gustav, does that does that solution to the Fermi paradox pose any problems for the current models of understanding of? our data that we have on the universe and of how aliens can, where aliens might be. Does that solution to the Fermi paradox pose an issue to that or is it compatible with it? Like what, what, what aspect of it? Well, is, is there something I'm missing here where it's like, that's the, that's the solution to the Fermi paradox that's proposed, but it's, is it in conflict with our data of the universe because we don't see anything at all? Is this something that I'm, is this, is this something I'm assuming, or is this something that's, that's in tension with that solution to the Fermi paradox? So <clears throat> if I'm understanding this correctly. I think that, that the universe kind of, what the data kind of suggests is that we are alone in our little section of the universe, maybe um i guess from what we can see so far in the observable universe there aren't any like anomalies that would that would basically screen life um right. and and everything that we have like analyzed like very deeply you know like if if life is a very common phenomenon then why haven't we seen it on any of the moons why haven't we seen it on like any of the plants in the system actually and that's not even like a really good argument because even if they they were in our solar system Right, it's more likely that panspermia, which means that the life that originated on Earth, kind of like got ejected out by a volcano or asteroid impact or whatever, onto things in our our kind of uh, solar system. But like we haven't seen like bio indicators on on any of the exoplanets that we've seen, you know, like phosphine gas or or anything that it, that is a pretty, you know, like big bio indicator. Um, but anyway, it. it and I think I think we should probably continue on to maybe like a other other kind of other solutions to the Fermi paradox because we've talked a lot about aliens. Um, but 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 for my my point is it seems to me like like the empirical evidence that we have out there does not suggest that we that 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 life is a very life and aliens aren't the easy explanation here if it if that is the explanation it would be pretty difficult and and we'd be right. it's nice it, it's not so, a given. that's my point so aliens aren't real so this is just a stupid conversation to have so going back to oh so true so just going back to what we're what we're supposed to be talking about the ufos what are ufos I think it's very obvious that UFOs are either some kind of military experiment or some absurd weather phenomenon that's uh, been, you know, witnessed by people and people are creating like some sort of hysteria surrounding them. And I think that calling them unidentified flying objects and with the, you know, innovation of TV, people see things on a screen and then it becomes this fantastical obsession. And I think people are looking at um, aliens and what they've seen in movies and in early 50s horror films and stuff like that. And they're kind of like in a fantastical 
way coming up with this idea of, oh my gosh, it's aliens. Oh my gosh, it's life on other planets, even though it's statistically zero that there are that there is life on other planets. Sure, it's a fun idea to play around with and really cool and, and whatever, but it's unrealistic. Uh, and so we're looking at something that's concrete that's happening here on 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 Earth, right? And I think uh, that it's very likely just beneficial and uh, helpful, like um, conspiracy that that people are like freaking out about for with with this UFOs and stuff. I think it helps people's agendas to be to have your people be afraid i think it benefits the government because they're looking for somebody to rely on to trust and if there is this enemy or this like uh yeah scum conspiracy if there is a um united force to rally behind i think it's easier to get people to kind of you know do whatever you want um and so aliens are frankly just retarded um and um yeah you know carl you're making an excellent point but i'm i'm besmirched that you didn't mention the other two possible explanations because you pointed out you're right i mean phenomenon as an explanation and there's military uh there's of course you know military okay the uh, the third option here is simple is that um the modern man the modern person gnomes is highly materialistic, right? People are obsessed with with concretes, with matter. Gnomes. It's ex- it's it's you can it's easily gnomes, experience it's on gnomes. it. You can visualize They're it. gnomes. <clears throat> but there is a um, there is a reality to humanity, and that is the fact that there is such thing as the human soul, and there are things that exist within our reality that might not be materially um, observable, but are no. spiritually observable. And um, I think that the obvious solution, speaking as a as a Catholic in the conversation, despite my namesake, um, that I think it's very clearly and very obviously spiritual warfare um, that people are experiencing when they're talking about aliens. And I'm not including people who are like crazy and stuff like that, because we have documented throughout countless times in history, at least from the Catholic perspective, of uh, spiritual um, anomalies, I'll call them, happening on like a mass scale. For example, the miracle of the sun, um, but also there have been um, several documentations of like mass possessions or um, uh, groups of people witnessing um, demonic, you know, influence to some degree. Um, and I think that, that um, when people see um, these alien sightings, if it's not government um, technology or if it's not some kind of weird weather phenomenon like ball lightning that um, Markiplier was was obsessing over and squeezing after, um, I think it's very blatantly just spiritual warfare. You do bring up a really interesting point because now this goes back to what Gusnoff had mentioned at the very, very beginning of the podcast where he, he kind of... Was- Thus, the amount of options that this could be, and it was like a mass, uh, kind of like a mass hallucination event, some projection of the human psyche, um, fourth dimensional entities, material aliens, um, government propaganda, or a psyop, or something like that. But I think that there is actually a, a, a creative like synthesis of like four of these things if we do consider the Catholic perspective, uh, and we also consider like attempting to come to know no I don't know the right word for this where we attempt to kind of describe the catholic perspective in terms we're familiar with and so i've seen a lot of i've seen i've seen theologians attempt to describe angels and demons in terms of like fourth dimensional entities which is something that gusnov brought up in the first he didn't bring up angels and demons when he brought up the idea of a fourth dimensional entity or like a like an extra dimensional entity um being taking part in this but also if we consider the the human psyche and the uniqueness of the human psyche from a union perspective we get some very fascinating results where perhaps the the same thing that we're calling a mass psychosis projection is a mass possession 
is a fourth dimensional entity where they're all the same thing because of the human consciousness being very, very uh, strange and epic. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. But well, the only issue is, are, is the fourth dimension actually real? And I'm not okay, sure. Okay. But see, now we're, now we're back in the weeds. Because uh, we we discussed we discussed weather phenomenon. Okay, that's a credible credible theory. We discussed sort of. We didn't really go into this military experiment. That's always just a good fallback because the military, you know, typically they're uh, much further technologically than people are anticipating. Um, especially the American military, since we dump so much money into it. I would hope at least we're turning something out for that. And then we talked about demonic manifestations. And that's pretty cool. I think that's the coolest option. Um, it's probably the least likely to be accepted, um, you know, just generally by the masses. They're more likely to go with the fun science fiction route. But I would like to present a fourth hypothesis uh, as to the, you know, a possible explanation for UFOs. People have not, for some reason, for some un unforeseeable reason, despite the preponderance of evidence, uh, supporting this uh, to explore. And that would be, um, well, actually, it, it begins on uh, t the 21st of September, 1964, wow. when an individual by the name of Giovanni Ferrero was born in uh, Ferrigliano, Italy. Now, this individual, right, he doesn't go to school and he actually doesn't do anything with his life. But in 2011, he assumes the leadership of the famous worldwide confectionery company, Ferrero Spa. Now, what two products does Ferrero Spa manufacture? The first is the Kinder Egg, and the second is the Tic Tac Mints, okay? Now, follow me, follow me, okay? He's created these two candy products, or he's, he's taken over this company that manufactures only two candy project, uh, products, and they only have one distinctive sort of recognizable shape, uh, one that is referred to as a Tic Tac, right? So I think... This is just a grand marketing scheme, okay? I think this is this is Giovanni Ferrero going. We need to make Tic Tacs great again, okay? His brother dies. He becomes the richest man in Italy. He has a net worth of thirty four point six billion dollars, and he wants to take Ferrero Spa to the next level. So uh, he's maybe maybe these are holograms or something. He's getting Tic Tac out there. Every <laughs> single bit of evidence we're seeing is corroborating that we're seeing Tic Tacs in the sky. What do you think that does to Tic Tacs, uh, sorry, Tic Tacs sales? That's we don't true. know. That's it's true. a private company. We can't actually track the data. If you walk into a supermarket, go to the Tic Tac aisle in your local supermarket, you're going to see on the Tic Tac boxes, they're going to have pictures of those military <laughs> radar um, evidences <laughs> pack it onto the TikTok boxes. They know it's free marketing, and you'll be surprised. They really play up that 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 we've like evidence of flying Tic Tacs. Um, uh, they really play up in, in, in their marketing. They really take advantage of that. So honestly, this this theory has a lot of credibility. Uh, I can't. I, think I can't. The theory with the most evidence. I right? can't for the life of me escape these advertisements for tic tacs where they they really <laughs> draw into this like oh ufo alien likes our tic tacs or something and stuff stuff like that it's 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 very fascinating it, it baffles me that gusnov didn't point this out earlier because he's the one making all these comments about uh, comics about you know Neuralink ads and you know advertising when it becomes even more predatory and toxic i think we're already there i think you know, we're there i think this honestly, is honestly i gotta be kind of i gotta be honest with you guys um I, I'm a I'm a paid partner of of the Tic Tac company. Um, the The purpose of this podcast was uh, was to kind of shy people away from from the truth of the matter. But but I think you've caught me red handed here. This is a uh, the Tic Tac conspiracy actually does seem to me as a scientist to be the most uh, most logical, most realistic one. So yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to lose my sponsorship now, but the truth matters i think i think you're right kipling yeah i do think that is the theory that has the most evidence and credibility and that's um, why you should buy mentos mints at your local <laughs> store mentos it keeps you fresh 
I mean, you see, that's actually the other side of the coin is that this could be marketing or it could be a, a ploy by like Skittles or something. A huge, because ARG, it's a huge ARG for U2's next album. <laughs> the YouTube Rewind 2023. <laughs> oh no <laughs> bro in the rewind they're gonna have a little clip of the tic tac you know they're gonna have it <laughs> they're gonna have like will smith going oh look at that tic tac <laughs> <laughs> oh that's hot and then, the, then there's gonna be a tic tac uh like tic tock dance and everyone's gonna be dancing like a tic tac oh, they're gonna be dressed yeah up we haven't even guy. that's what TikTok is dude yes that's yes TikTok exactly is. that was the in one year tic tac tic tock is gonna change uh the the talk to a tick or t- wait how, i don't know how it works anyway <laughs> to a, to a, to a, K, anyway the tack to a talk yes yeah, yeah, yeah yes so so shit dude i think this is i think this is what the government doesn't want us to know wow now see now we're going back into the real the real fruit of this where the answer is china <sighs> Fuck. He's right. They own TikTok. They own Tic Tac, probably. Yeah, they have well, Giovanni it's under their company, thumb. So I, I don't know. I mean, should be Italiana, but uh, uh, you'd be surprised. Giovanni is bought and paid for by the Chinese Communist Party. Giovanni's real name is Lao Lao Shao. <laughs> no, Gian, Gian. What's his last name? Italian last name. Xiao Xiao Ping. You know his dad, this uh, this uh, Michelle Michelle Ferrero guy. He lived like a like a hundred, almost a hundred years. Probably. That's fishy. That's yeah, fishy. that is fishy, dude. China was keeping him alive. He's gonna claim that all he ate was Tic Tacs. We know it was baby foreskin. <laughs> gosh oh that's how they stay young it's true all right all right all right how about how about how about we how about we get get a little back on track Dre, uh, carl marx carl marx who doesn't have to, who doesn't own a a very cool uh apparel brand um <clears throat> can you explain to us why space isn't real um so it takes a particular individual who has an IQ above maybe seven or eight to be able to acknowledge the fact that space is extremely boring, uninteresting, and worthless to even delve into because all there is no difference with you know playing Dungeons and Dragons and looking through your telescope um you're 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 playing with two worlds that are wildly fantastical and uh unobtainable for the human soul and, and individual um if you look at the uh 1950s something mid the mid 50s um uh, before the moon landing and all that crap um they have, you know, the early tests of NASA when they were trying to break through the uh, atmosphere and they couldn't do it. Um, and they would document what the uh, what the pilots would experience when they would be under that tremendous stress and force, you know, all the G force and all that crap. Um, and they talk about having uh, hallucinations where they hear these voices and they see blackness and and they see. Um, they see like, you know, their loved ones dying and all these horrible, horrible hallucinations. And when, you know, when you read these, these um, documented like experiences of these pilots before the apparent uh, moon landing, um, it makes me wonder if what they were experiencing was, you know, something, uh, again, uh, spiritual in nature. Um, but in all reality, uh, I just think I just think that that desire to look into space and to um, to be fascinated by by void is just is so uninteresting and and very low level um, for people and because people are more obsessed with trying to um, 
adventure out into the unknown of space when a mass like there's there's m- massive land areas uh that 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 we have not yet even inhabited or explored here on earth um antarctica as the primary example um and it's just it's just really silly to me i don't i don't i don't understand why people are so obsessed with it there's nothing okay. there it's not exciting it's just nothingness there can't be life in space the the fact that we're alive is statistically zero all the elements that have come together all of the equi- like you know um all of the all of the an- uh, anomalies that have happened to create life here on earth our specific location the sun um our atmosphere all these all of these variables is statistically zero that they're all happening at once right to find a planet that has an atmosphere or to find a planet that has um soil with 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 enough nutrients to grow life to find like a few variables here and there is you know i think something that's calculatable plausible possible to find uh planets that have a quarter of as many resources or variables that the earth has is not possible and to find another planet with the exact circumstances that Earth has out there in the distance in the co- in the cosmos, I think it's just playing fantasy. You're just saying, "Oh, things are big, therefore things can happen in it." And I, to me, that's just that's just foolish. And so it's not so much of a of a fact of the matter that space is literally not real, but that the that aspiring towards it is just is is nothing. And, and also, I doubt it's ever going to actually happen. Right. Well, I, I, I have to agree to an extent that um, it is kind of retarded that people are so obsessed with space. And it is, of course, it's like a religious thing. It's like, oh, the, the big science, you know what I mean? Like they, they look at space and it's like this retard Neil deGrasse Tyson type of um, type of deal. But uh, on the flip side, you know, I, I'm someone that really enjoys stargazing Um I, I think it, when I, when I look at the stars, I'm just reminded of, you know, how great God is, you know, I'm just yes. reminded of glory because it's, it is an incomprehensible scale. Um, when you know how far away or, well, when you have a good idea of how far away stars are and just how vast and incomprehensibly vast this universe is, that's what I find interesting about space there is some truth that like space travel is boring and dumb and uh shouldn't shouldn't be done um like (laughs) i I don't think people realize this but actually living on mars or titan or any of these theoretically colonizable moons or planets would be the most mundane and awful life that you could possibly live you would be looking at dust storms like 24-7, um, your your bones would be weak. You'd have to exercise more often than you normally would. Um, your your children, uh, if they don't have like severe dysgenic <laughs> uh, properties from just being, being born in like different gravity generation after gener- generation, like they're going to also never know what like trees look like. Or, you know, I mean, like Earth literally is the most beautiful, um, you know, biomes and, and geography imaginable and you go to space and it's like there's two cool terrains to every planet there's like two cool things and then you're done and you're stuck there and yeah. uh you know i just think i think it's, it's kind of lame yeah we well, well, we well have. the reason the thing is everyone kind of thinks that because like in the 1800s people will be were like oh yeah mars is like all green and there's these giant canals and there's martians on there and there's, there's people on the moon there's people everywhere right people in the 1800s and stuff they thought in the 1700s too they were like oh yeah there's there's life everywhere and blah blah, blah. and that kind of developed into oh well like it turned into kind of modern pop culture and kind of the Star Wars culture where where people think that, <laughs> yeah, space is like the thing is, there isn't that many there isn't that like life is what creates like, you know, like some like complexity and something that's interesting. Yes, space is is like homogenous and, you know, flat and, and boring. Right. But but I don't I don't think that that's like something that's that's inherently like, uh, you know, just something that that 
that doesn't mean that it's not a frontier. It's a frontier. And the, the, what makes it interesting is I think what people will be able to do with it. Like, yes, like Kipling, you're right. Um, like living on Mars with the technology we have right now, would suck, but there is, there are ways of living in space, which are, are actually like fascinating, like, like O'Neill cylinders, which is a, like a, a real technology that could, we could do now if we really wanted to. And you could essentially create very similar conditions to life on earth. Thing is per like a perfect replica replication of life on earth. I don't think will ever happen, but um, I, I do think that it is likely in humanity's future for us to expand out outward, but, but, but we'll never, we'll never be able to make a perfect earth. I don't think. Um, yeah. And then the idea just, Oh yeah, we're just going to colonize another planet. That is an old kind of way of looking at things. That's probably not like the, like where everyone's going to be in, in the future. But anyway, I've done a video on that. It's called the, uh, where will people live 40,000 years from now? You can find it on yeah, I don't even think that that's that's realistic though. People are going to be on Earth forty thousand years from now. Like, I, I I I genuinely think that again, it's just the influence of like mixed media, TV, Halo, like all the stuff that people actually believe that this kind of stuff is plausible. Um, and sure, you can you can you can um, calculate as to like the potentials of this occurring and blah blah blah. And you can make all these like fancy equations to be like, you see, it's plot, it's possible, it could happen. But at the end of the day, I think it's just, I think it's just like it's uh, it's playing pretend. It's it's what it is, right? Like we have a place to live, we have a place to exist, we have resources, and that's called Earth. And the only viable option for life is if we like, um, like. I forget the exact name of it, but when you like take the um, geography of a place and you morph it and change it over, over like hundreds of years, uh, the terror, like terraforming, right? What, what you're doing with terraforming is you're just making an imitation of the earth. Like there is, it's impossible for there to be life outside of earth. It's statistically zero. And it's not, it's not, um, I think a real thought and going into the UFO things, I think it's just, Again, it's just more nonsense because to me, it sounds like it's going to be um, a tool for propaganda and a tool for um, manipulating masses um, to be afraid of this of this potential of what could be out there in the cosmos. And we could expand and we can go out there. That will solve our problems. That will give us our resources. But there are no resources to get out there. Like there are there's stones and and there's, um, you know, there's um, like minerals. But like what, like what else? Like there isn't anything else. What would you consider to be a resource? Like, oh, if that were in space, then I would say there would be resources. Okay, so if you have, so if if we were to go out to space and we were to go to Mars, we would have on Mars, we would have dirt, right? And maybe in the core of Mars somewhere, there's a rare, there's, there's a deposit of, of, an inexplainable amount of gold that's like, you know, just playing imagination right now because space is just imagination anyways. Um, okay, we found this this massive pool of, of gold, three times the amount we have on Earth, right? Okay, cool. But I'm talking about what the actual planet itself can provide for us, literally nothing, right? We have gold, so we have to take that back to Earth. And then now we have more material that we associate value to that doesn't really offer us much out, out, outside of, you know, like maybe practical use in electricity and technology that, you know, needs gold to, to help the, the, you know, the circuits or whatever. Um, you don't really have anything, right? I can't go out to some quantum Zebo in galaxy X, Z, Y, B 2.5 light years away and take my little ship there. Like there's not, it's not going to have uh, oxygen. It's not going to have plants for me to grow for us to farm with, right. Unless we terraform it. And I don't think that that's a plausible and realistic outcome. It would take us thousands and thousands of years to practically terraform a building. Uh, sorry, not a building a planet. And at that point, like, like we, there are places on earth we can't even terraform right now. Right. And so I think it's, it's naive of us to think we can build an O'Neill cylinder to help reform or inhabit space around the planet. Um, when we can't even convert our own deserts into oases where to farm with, right? Like we can't even inhabit Antarctica, right? Apparently we can't well, even, you, you know, inhabit the, uh, 